Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal. And today we're gonna to talk about our main equipment review of the 12 volt fridges. Now these are super popular with Overlanders and you can see them in almost every vehicle because they really make a difference when we're in the back country, keeping food and drink cold and fresh. So one of the things that we needed to decide on was what units were we gonna evaluate? And for that, we made sure that they were newer units. So designed and offered to the market within the last couple years. We also restricted them to a certain size range. So the smallest fridge is 45 liters and the largest fridges are 69 liters. And then we also made sure that each individual unit had the capability of freezing in a separate compartment or the ability to make ice. This unit is the ARB 0 73 quart dual zone. Comes in at 69 liters and 68 pounds and is priced at $1,526 retail. Cool down time is seven hours and 25 minutes, which is a little bit slower than average. And the warm up time is 12 hours and 30 minutes, which is right about average. So the steady state Amperage draw is 2.83 amp hours, so it does consume quite a bit more power to maintain a steady state, and it does have app control as well. On the pros and cons, for the pros, this is a serious volume fridge. So you've got 69 total liters or 73 quarts for storing hundreds of Pellegrinos. And then you've also got a very durable construction overall. In fact, I would say this is one of the more durable fridges in the test with heavy duty, significant reinforced rubber corners, a very robust lid, et cetera. And then it does have the dual 12 volt inputs as well. So one on each side, just in case, however you need to orient the fridge in the vehicle. And on the cons, again, we're dealing with a space efficiency issue. Despite the fact that it's 69 liters, because of all of this, reinforcement of the fridge. It is a large unit. You can see it in this video compared to the other ones. It's also, again, very heavy at 68 pounds. So those that are concerned about payload need to be looking at that as well. And then below average performance on the whole. For this unit, we have the Dometic CFX3 55IM. This comes in at 55 liters and 47 pounds overall, so the lightest unit in the test. The cool down time was only four hours and 30 minutes, which is the fastest in the test by quite some margin. The warm up took 17 hours, which was above average, better than average performance. The steady state amperage draw comes in at 2.29 amp hours, and this does have the best app control in the test as well. On the pros, we have the best overall display. I actually really like where the display is located up high on the fridge, so it doesn't matter how you have it oriented or stored within the vehicle, you can always see it. And it's got the best overall performance in the test. So if you were to weight all of the cool down, warm up, amp draw, weight, all of those other factors, this has the best overall performance. And one thing that's very important is the lowest overall weight at 47 pounds. On the cons, this does have the lack of a traditional freezer. So it can only freeze ice cube, which is sometimes all you need for most of your travels. I actually kind of like this configuration myself personally. The other thing to note on a con is that it is an all plastic construction. So it may be a good idea to get the protective case around it. Given the fact that it's all plastic, I think it's gonna show signs of wear sooner than the other units in the test. And for this unit, we have the Angle MT45F combi unit. Now this is a unique angle in the fact that it has a separate freezer compartment designed into it. It also has a lot of updates over previous angle models, despite the, the fact that it looks nearly the same as angles of even 20 years ago. Now, when it comes to time, this is one of the units that I have used the longest. So angles I've been using for almost two decades. Now this unit is a 43 liter 
and it weighs 55 pounds, so it's a little heavier for the interior volume, and it costs $1,099. The cool down time took seven hours and 45 minutes, and the warm up was an average of 15 hours and 17 minutes. So, both the cool down and the warm up, pretty average performance. The steady state amperage draw was 1.86 amp hours, but it was very efficient as it was cooling down. So, it has one of the best amp hour capabilities while it's under cooling. So, pros and cons. This has the lowest startup amperage of any of the units, which is really important when you're using a factory 12 volt plug. So if it has smaller diameter wires, this unit is compatible with factory wiring. And it also has the lowest overall amp draw, as we talked about a second ago, while it's cooling down. This is also one of the most space efficient units within the test. So the overall size is very small. Fridges are getting bigger and bigger for their internal volume because they're trying to add so much insulation. If you're very sensitive to space, the angle's a good choice. On cons, it doesn't work as well as just a fridge because of the coil configuration on the inside. It really is designed to be a combination of freezer and fridge. I also have noted through the many years of using this product that the handle strength is fairly limited. So you don't really want to use these handles for lashing. So there is some aftermarket solutions towards better performance and better strength when it comes to lashing these particular angles down. And it's also important to note that the angle on the whole is very average when it comes to cool down performance and overall warming up performance. But what makes the angle kind of legendary is its reliability. So if you're looking for the most reliable fridge, that's been our experience with this particular unit. This unit is a National Luna Legacy Dual Zone. This is a 50 liter unit that weighs at, in at 55 pounds, so kind of in the middle of the weight range for the size, and it costs $1,295. Now let's talk about the performance real quick because this is notable. The cool down took six hours and 30 minutes, which is kind of in the middle of the pack but it was the warm up that was very noticeable. So the warm up took 18 hours and 42 minutes to go from 46 degrees Fahrenheit up to 56 degrees Fahrenheit. So this unit without question has the best warm up capability, the best insulation of the entire test. The amp hours that it consumes under steady state for a set temperature is only 0.86 amps. And that again is related to the excellent insulation performance. Now let's talk about pros and cons. Pros, it is a high quality unit. It looks attractive. So high quality materials used throughout, including this dimpled stainless steel. The lid mounting can be changed as well. So it can change from a side opening to a long side opening. And then it also has very precise controls uh, via its main control panel. So we have found that this maintains very tight control over the temperature within the unit. And then it also, again, has that class leading insulative performance, which has always set National Luna apart. Now the cons. So this is a slower cool down than what we've experienced from previous National Lunas. This is an all new unit, has a new compressor and some additional new design to it. So we did find that the cool down profile was quite unique. So it had these longer cycles of the compressor running and then longer cycles of the compressor in the off position. It's likely that National Luna tuned that to be the best balance between compressor performance and insulative performance. But it is notable that the cool down is again in the middle of the pack. It also has two latches. Now this could be considered a con if you're trying to access a drink. Um, it's easier with two hands or it takes a little bit more time to unlatch both sides. But this latch in particular if you do latch both sides, it does a much better job of compressing the seal around the lid. And that is part of the reason why the National Luna has great, such great insulation. And here we have the Truma C69 Dual Zone. So this is a 69 liter unit that comes in at a whopping 69 pounds as well. The asking price is $1,549.
And on the performance side, we saw a cool down in six hours and 12 minutes, which is a little bit better than average. But we saw a warm up time of 16 hours and 18 minutes. Heavy reinforced plastic corners and an overall heavy duty construction. You can also swap the lid both directions. It has dual 12 volt inputs, which is really nice. That way, depending on how you orient the fridge in the vehicle, you can access 12 volt input on either side of the fridge. And then it does have dual zone swappable control, so you can make one side the freezer or the fridge up to the user. On the cons, this has lower overall space efficiency. Despite the fact that it's 69 liters, it is a massive fridge that takes up a lot of space inside the vehicle. And then it is a very heavy unit. So this is nearly 70 pounds, which needs to be taken into consideration if you plan to move it around by yourself or put it into a vehicle that has limited payload. This fridge test would not be complete without a quick discussion around the differences between the ARV and the Truma fridges. They are both made in the same factory in China, and if you look at them, they are nearly identical. There's some small differences aesthetically to the outside of the fridges and in the handles. The ARB also has a high quality lashing unit that is provided along with it. What we did note was a difference, a significant difference in the warm up performance between these two fridges with the ARB uh, being much more quick to warm up. And we know why. It is in the lid seal of the ARB. We could actually, with the FLIR unit, we could see the loss of cooling that was coming out of the ARB lid. Now that we've gone through all the specs, let's talk about who won. Some of the most coveted prizes that we give in the Overland Journal tests is our value award because it is the fridge, in this particular case, that does a great job overall for an exceptional value. Now that actually came down to these two fridges. And we ultimately decided upon the angle for the value award, which comes in at $1,099, because of the quality, durability, and reliability of the angle fridges. If you are looking for maximizing your value, you should buy the fridge that is inexpensive and has a long-standing tradition of reliability, and that is the angle. But for our editor's choice, it went to the Dometic. This is the first time we've ever awarded a Dometic, the editor's choice on the fridge tests, and it completely took us by surprise with its excellent performance, low overall weight, and exceptional value. So this summarizes our Overland Journal fridge test. These are two excellent units that we look forward to seeing out in the field. Now to get all of the detailed information on this test, check out expeditionportal.com for the entire article, or you can order the Overland Journal back issue and see it in print. Now also what's super important with each one of these tests is to have tight controls over the environment and the way that we test each individual unit. And for that, we stuck with a 78 degree ambient temperature, plus or minus one degree. It's also critical that each individual unit sees a consistent voltage. And for that, it was 13.2 volts, plus or minus 0.2 volts. It's also really critical that we look at the type of load that we're using and we make sure that that load, that thermal load, is consistent across all of the fridges as well. And for that, we went with 423 fluid ounces. So that was 38 cans of San Pellegrino, the bubbly water that seems to be very popular with Overlanders these days. So we wanted to give each one of the fridges a significant thermal load that it needed to cool down rapidly as possible. And for that, we needed to start to collect our data. And to collect data, we needed to look at a bunch of different variables. And one of those things is, how much amperage does each individual unit use? And for that, we used a Fluky unit that had Fluky Connect, so we can actually Bluetooth to the individual unit and then collect that data on our laptop. We also used a PowerWorks unit that was in line to the fridge to validate those numbers that we were receiving with the Fluky as well. So we were making sure that each one of these critical components that we had some redundancy in the data collection. The other thing that we wanted to know was how loud are these units? For that, we used a decibel meter as well. 
Now the most important thing is, is collecting temperature data from within the fridge. And for that, we used two individual data loggers and they have temperature probes that went into the fridges. And the two data loggers are critical as well because again, we want that redundancy of the information that we're collecting. And we pulled all of that data down into a CSV file so that way we could look at it afterwards and graph the data, which we'll share with you here in the video as well. And one of the last things that we always want to look at with fridges is where we're getting thermal loss. So where the fridge itself is its hottest, which is typically around the vents, but also more important, where is it losing cooling? And for that, we used a FLIR forward-facing thermal imaging camera to look at multiple angles of each individual unit. And then the last thing that we did is we took temperature data collection off of the vents to determine how hot it was as it was going through the cooling cycles. Now, what is it that we were testing? We wanted to know how quickly we could take that 423 fluid ounce load and cool it down from 78 degrees ambient down to 46 degrees, which is right in the range of where you would want to typically keep a refrigerator to keep food fresh. The other thing that we want to look at is the thermal efficiency of the unit. So what kind of insulation does it have? So once you get it down to 46 degrees, how long does it take the fridge to warm back up to 56 degrees? That is a very important thing. It tells us a lot about the insulative capacity of the fridge. We also need to understand once we get it down to 46 degrees Fahrenheit, what is the amperage requirements to keep that load at that set temperature? So that's our amp hours that are expressed. And that's really important because we need to know how much battery capacity do we have to have in the vehicle or how much power is being used to maintain that temperature. We also want to know how loud these fridges are. Many of us sleep inside our vehicles or the fridges are possibly kept inside a camper with us. So we need to know how loud these individual units are because that may keep us up at night. We also need to look and see what the vent temperatures are. So that's where we collected those four points of data collection around the thermal exiting of heat from that venting component of each individual fridge. It's also really important to know how much these units weigh. Because many of us are concerned about payload, a lighter unit is also going to be maybe part of the decision set. And then the last thing that we looked at is all of the subjective components of a fridge. How easy is it to operate? How well does the app work if you can pair your phone with it? How comfortable are the handles to lift the fridge and transport it? or lash the unit down inside the vehicle or camper. There's a lot of other subjective components as well, which we won't go into in this video, but that covers the overview of the testing and considerations for our main fridge test.